Hi everyone who's joining us on YouTube. We are painting a koi fish and we're using cheesecloth on Aquarius 2 paper, Strathmore Aquarius 2. <clears throat> So this is a picture from the internet that I took of a koi fish. And just ignore this little blue here because it seeped through the sample painting that I did last night. This is what it's going to look like when we're done. So the first step is to use PBO to do the fish and the fins. So I always use a good brush. But here is the number one secret if you're following and you haven't studied with me before, is that you have to put your brush into dilute shampoo. So that's what I just did. That's dilute shampoo. And then I just kind of work that shampoo through my brush with my fingers. And then I'm ready to dip it into the PBO. This is the PBO. It's drawing gum. It's liquid frisket. This is the best liquid frisket that you can buy. And it's so much better than all the others. And I've tried almost every other brand. I, will, I won't even use them. I'll dump them out. So I just put my brush into that PDO, which is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to freehand this fish just with the PBO because I know their face is kind, of, is kind of squared up and then it has this little round. So I know that this shape is <clears throat> well. And I just want to sort of So I'm just, I kind of outlined it just with my brush. I like this fin here that's half, uh, that's covering up the orange. And I'm gonna fill in the body completely so that there's no lines that are uncovered by PBO. I'm gonna work on the face a little bit, kind of make a nice little start to that. And then right over here where this eye is, I'm going to just make, it's not even a half circle. It's just the top of a circle sticking out. There's my little bump for the eye. The other eye's in that part. So I did the body. Now what I'm gonna do is just take my brush and just follow the shape of those fins. and then make another little line right next to it. So now I have areas in my paper that are showing next to these lines. So it's very, I think, I know a lot of people have been using the word organic. This shape is considered organic. There's a little flick of this one over the top. So this is not solid. This PBO is not solid. That's the tail fin. I could go out a little further too. Like I said, ignore that blue on the outside. And then there's this uh, fin here. I know all these fins have names, but I'm not really a good botanist, a fishologist. So I just call them all fins. The trick is though that I'm leaving little holes, little Okay, so now this fin though, this one goes like this and then I know it goes up over the fish. And then these fins come this way, right from about there. And there's kind of two long, 
doing things. This little thing's got some attitude. Kind of like Shauna's tennis game. Got attitude, I'll tell you that. Hi. You're gonna hear all about it. You can tell who won. <laughs> Shauna played great. She's my hero. Thank you. I want to be like Shauna when I grow up. <laughs> no, you don't. I want to be like Shauna when I grow older. Oh, okay. I like that. Oh, there's one here. One more fin. Don't get me wrong, I love playing with Shauna. One of my <laughs> favorite people in the world to play with. Thank you. I would go hundreds of miles to play with Shauna. <laughs> my goodness. Uh, okay, there's the PBO of the fins and the body of the fish. Don't forget to rinse your brush out right now and then feel the bristles. And if it's smooth, you've got all the PBO out. If it's not smooth, just shake it again and get it till your bristles are smooth. So I have done two things. One is I dried the PBO with a blow dryer. This PBO has to be dry. And so now everything is dry. And I've put this piece of cheesecloth that has all these holes in it. I pulled out the threads. I try to pull out like one more so you can see. No, I don't want to mess it up. This has paint on it because I did a demonstration painting, a sample painting last night, and I just am reusing it. So I've spread my cheesecloth. And I like the little area up here that's a little lighter. This is a little spray bottle. What I'm going to do is spray my cheesecloth and touch it so it's going to stick to the paper. So this is how I'm making it stick. <laughs> I just tap it down and you know I can move the fibers around if I don't like the shape of them. This is what I, I can tell where I've missed because the fibers are in the air. And I just go right over the PBO. Okay. All right. So now that's okay, the spot. Okay, so this paper is pretty damp. The fibers are all wet. Already, you're kind of getting an idea what it's going to look like. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start with Antwerp blue. As you, I mean, all of my students know that Antwerp blue is my favorite color in the world. My license plate even has PB27 on it, which is the, the symbol for Antwerp blue. So see, I'm making a big, thick puddle. So that's my puddle there. Now I'm just going to start adding this and toward blue to my paper, and I'm painting over my fibers. Now, if I have antwerp blue on one side of the fish, I need to have that same antwerp blue on the other side of the fish. And you can make it as dark as you want, use as much paint as you want. As I'm using a number 10 brush, my pencil brush, I just have to be patient. And just, I'm just painting the whole paper. 
over the fibers. Kind of have this whole corner is Antwerp blue. Bless you, whoever that was. The nice little sneeze, they're not like our family. <laughs> I think the roof's gonna fall in. I'm gonna start switching colors a little bit. Well, that's more Antwerp, not quite yet. I'm gonna use every color blue on my palette. I'm gonna go to green blue now. Oh, it's so beautiful. If I, if I put green blue on this side, I have to have green blue on that side of the fish. Oh, these colors are so amazing. They're so beautiful. So I just have to be patient because I have this little brush that I'm using, but I like this little brush. Now I'm going to use uh, indigo. I'm just putting it into my puddle. Then I'm going to darken this corner with indigo. I have some dark indigo. There, I need some dark indigo, at least on two other spots. Another spots of indigo. Now I'm gonna to go to French. So this just takes a little time. Just be a little patient with it. I have French on this side. Guess where I also need to have it? A couple other spots, two other spots somewhere, random, different sizes. This that I just added is my Mary Blue Permanent Violet Bluish, and it is so beautiful also. So I kind of want the bottom of the painting a little darker than the top. So I'm adding this purple down here at the bottom. Trying not to move the fibers I'm just trying to let them be in place that I'm painting over them. So if I have purple, permanent violet bluish there, I need some two other places. That was a lot. That's okay though. It's all going to be okay. It's going to be so beautiful. I have more Antwerp. This top part needs some paint. I haven't really gotten there yet. And you can make this as dark as you want. There's no right or wrong way to do this at this point. This is This would be such a great painting to do with kids because the results would just be so incredible. The colors are so beautiful. And you can splatter if you want to. I've got indigo. I'm, of course, I'm going to splatter on my new shirt. Just flicking this indigo. I 
Are you painting over the whole PBO fish? Yep, right over the fish. Well, that's a lot of black splotches. I think I'm going to do some more splotches with maybe some Antwerp blue. Oh, that's better. I like that. I love the Antwerp. And I'm going to try some green blue splatters. Especially into the purple because the green blue into the purple makes this beautiful blue. Well, it's not really doing it now, but sometimes it does. Mostly it does. What do you think? Is that enough splatters? Looking pretty good. Okay, that's enough paint for me. You can put on as much as you want. And then it has to dry. If you can take it outside on a sunny day and let it dry outside, if the cheesecloth doesn't blow off, or you can gently use a blow dryer, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pause it now and gently, gently dry this. Okay, so I use a blow dryer and I blue dry this, blue dry, blow dry, blow dry, this really well. And now I'm going to pull up my cheesecloth. Wow. Very gently. And where the cheesecloth was, there are little white lines because we sprayed it with the squirt bottle first and that absorbed water and then the paint did not go to that part. The next step now is to pull off this PBO. This thing here is called a pickup. It's just a little piece of rubber. And your painting has to be dry when you do this. Now I'm just going over where the PBO was. I wanna keep where my fish is white. I want to keep it white. Oh, I just got a smear. That's too bad. I'm trying to keep, trying not to go over it with a dirty spot. I want this white part of the fish to stay white. Where it is. Where'd you lose, Sharna? My the little rubber. Pick up. Yeah. Can I use something else? You can use your fingers. You can use a piece of tape, masking tape. Okay. You can use a quarter. Maybe that's what I'll do. Let's see if this works. Remember what I did with that. Hmm. Okay. Ah, amazing. No, that's not working. Huh. I probably didn't use enough PBO on my fins. They're pretty. I don't know. Kind of. I don't know. I like it. So I've done two things. One is I cleaned my palette and I rinsed my brush out really, really well in clean water because I don't want any indigo in my brush. And the other thing I did was I drew in this one fin that goes over the red part of the body of the fish. Now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to start with the eyes. So there's one round eye with white around it. That's big. It's, it's foreshortened though, so it's kind of an oval. And then there's an eye out here that actually is just the black part, but the white part is the, well, Penny, you probably know all about eyes and what all these pieces of eyes are, but it's it's the like it's the clear part on the outside. Cornea. Cornea. So what I'm gonna do is just make it oh I just stuck my I just redid my brush into the dark colors. So that's okay, I can wash it again. So I am making black with indigo and sepia. I just need a dot of it and a really super fine tip on my brush. I'm going to touch my paper towel. And now what I'm going to do is paint the pupil, the dark part of this tiny little arch of an eye here, but I'm going to leave the outside white because that's the cornea. I don't know if you could see that. Should I zoom in on that? Right there, what I painted. So I painted black, but I left the cornea white. And now I'm going to paint this eye in, which is, it's a, it's a circle, except it's foreshortened. So it's more like an oval. Just with the last two hairs on this brush. That's why it's such a nice brush. If I don't paint it in solid, that's good because there's a little highlight in the pupil. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush almost all the way and dry it. So now I just kind of have dirty water in there and I'm going to put a line around it because again, the cornea is white. So dirty water around the edge of this eye. I'm actually going to do a tiny bit of a disappearing edge on the top of this. There's my two eyes. Now I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to re-clean my brush. Clean up that spot of indigo. I don't want that being in my yellow and pink paint. And now I'm going to make orange. And orange is clean brush. Permanent rose and hands of yellow medium. Bumblebee, if that's what you've got, they're exactly the same color. And there you just get that beautiful orange. Oh, it, even just on my palette, it looks like the fish. So now I'm going to just um, paint in the orange spots, the orange part of this fish. Doesn't even have to be perfect because who knows what the spots of this particular fish are. I put more pink into it and then it just changes the color a little bit. I can put more yellow into it and change the color kind of a little different again so that it's not the same color for the whole fish. Now I'm going to go around this fin that I drew. I'm 
I'm adding more permanent rows right in here to get a little darker orange. Now here's the little tricky thing that I'm gonna do. I am going to paint negative orange into this fin. So where that blue spot is, I think I'm gonna zoom in on this. I'm going to continue this blue area with orange. I'm gonna actually kind of dip my brush in the water and now I have sort of a dirty brush. So what I'm doing is painting the, the fin, the parts I can see through the fin onto the fish with orange paint, I actually liked it darker. And then this one has a little white by its fin, but it doesn't really, it's not sitting that well. So I'm gonna make that more, I just made the whole fish orange right in there. Here's the fin over the orange fish. Now I'm going to add some orange to the fins. I think I'll just leave it right here. So there's some orange on this fin right here. And there's a little bit of orange on this fin. And I can put a little orange up here if I want to. Now it's kind of a Bob Ross sort of thing. You can make your fins whatever color you want. It's your, your fins. There's a little bit of pale orange around his eye, kind of a yellowish orange. I'm gonna add some of that, kind of scale-like almost. So it's sort of, I'm gonna use some of that color in the fins. If those three fins have a little bit of orange in them, I think these top fins need a little bit too. It's pale. And I think the very last step, if we want to do it, is to put a little bit of shadowing. I'm gonna lift this up now. In some parts of the fins, so and it's just indigo, it's an indigo and blue mixture. So maybe some French. Yeah, that's nice. Very, very pale. 
And I can just put a little shadowing in some of these to make them look like they might be behind the ones, part of the fin that's on the top. And then I think I need to stop. Well, I see this little area right here where I have a white spot by the eye. I think that needs to be a little bit in shadow with a little disappearing edge. Yeah. And it's not, oh, I like it when the colors kind of bleed. I have sort of a white spot there. I think I'll leave it. I didn't really mean to, but I kind of like it. And if I want to, I can, there's sort of a highlight along the top of this fish. So there's a bit of a shadow on the side. So this is just that very pale indigo and it's doing all kinds of weird things, making lines because my paper's pretty dry and my brush was wet, so it's making all these uh, watermarks, but I kind of like them. They look sort of like scales. What the heck? Hey, there's a fish. Can I hold it up? Oh, hey, hey. Uh, put it so we can see more of it on the screen. We, can, we can't see his head. Oh, that is wow, painting. It's gorgeous. I love the reds on your fish, your background, oh the shape of your fish. You did the eyes beautifully. That's, that's a beautiful painting, Penny. It is. Gorgeous. Nice. It's pretty. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at the background is just amazing. And the fish just really feels like it's part of the background, the way that you painted the fins. The eyes are great. It's that's a beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. Just the the orange that you used on the color of the fish is beautiful. And I love how it kind of granulated into the paper a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And how you have your, oh, it's beautiful. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. The old, it's hard to leave the whites. No, but <clears throat> they do, they are that color. And um, I love how the strings worked in the background. Thank you. Yeah, I, used, I added more purple and I think that made the black look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love how some of the strings are white and some of them are dark. It just sort of adds to the whole thing. Thank you. And I, I like that the shape of your eyes are very foreshortened. Thank you. That is pretty good for your first try on Zoom. <laughs> Did a good job. Thank you. All right. Getty. Hold it down just a little bit. Oh, I'm trying to find myself in a minute. There you okay. go. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. The background cool. looks like water <coughs> and wow. the fins are all. That's really pretty. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> but I messed up that eye. How can I get that eye is not quite right? The little one? Yeah, the little one. Uh, you're going to have to lift very carefully with a little brush. I'm going to pause this and demonstrate okay. that for you. Oh, it's beautiful. Your background is so soft and I love the white lines in it. It really, it echoes the fins and the color's gorgeous. Did a great job on the eyes. I like his little orange nose. 
you know, it makes your eye go to that area. It's very striking. You're like, wow, beautiful. Ooh. Wow. Oh, you Ooh, put the nice. lips on. That's it's really more, It's more a straight down because you have both eyes mm -hmm. rather than sideways. And his little, his little whiskers, they do that. <laughs> and uh, your background is just gorgeous. I love the dark indigo-y top, the cloudy spots. I love the... The colors in your fish that was kind of wet and then they sort of um, blended with each other mm -hmm. and you made that top pectoral fin you actually know these fish huh you know we used to have them in our pond <laughs> so i want to just say one thing that I'd, um chris if that were my painting mm -hmm. i probably would work on the the white lines between the orange spots on the fish just think about it because it looks more um, reticulated like a giraffe. And usually like it's, you have the same, like it's a quarter of an inch around all of those. I think if you change the shape of those white areas between your orange spots, uh -huh. I think it would be, I don't know if you want to add water to it and sort of blur it or, you know, look at some other fish, but I think that's one area that you could, you could, uh, improve. Okay. Shauna, you going to show us? Wow. Beautiful. Really nice. Hi, Dad. That's so, nice. So gorgeous. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Your background's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us on YouTube. I could not be more pleased. These are beautiful paintings and so interesting with this technique. So thanks again. Thank you.